Reforms to ensure fair polls, Dr. Yunus, UK Minister for laying out vision for level playing field. Interim government failing to prioritize due to fascist influence alleges BNP leader Salam. Inflation, economic downturn, poverty, inequality, top risks for next two years, says CBD. Assalamu alaikum, this is Jyothri Sama. Welcome to All TV News. You have just heard the Crown Summit headlines. Now let's move on to the details. Chief Advisor Professor Mohammad Yunus conveyed to UK Minister for the Indo Pacific, Catherine West, that the reform initiatives are aimed at ensuring free and fair elections in Bangladesh and to break away from the rampant vote rigging practiced by the previous regime. During the meeting at the state guest house, Jomuna, Dr. Yunus described his government's reform initiatives to fix the country's key institutions and the Election Commission. West backed the reform, saying Britain would like to see vibrant debates on the key aspects of electoral, judiciary and constitutional reforms. She said her government would extend full support to Bangladesh, including in its effort to bring back billions of dollars of laundered money. The minister say the UK would also extend its support to Dhaka's efforts to bring back tens of billions of dollars siphoned off abroad during Hasina's nearly 16-year-long rule. UK Minister Catherine West said that Britain expects the chief advisor to lay out his vision for how all things will unfold as the government is committed to promoting national reconciliation. After remitting with the foreign affairs advisor, Tawhid Hussain, at the foreign ministry, West said the UK will seek to support the people of Bangladesh as they move forward in the next phase. She said they know that the interim government has committed to restoring peace and order, ensuring accountability and promoting national reconciliation and it has the full support of the UK government in these objectives. We know that the interim government in Bangladesh has committed to restoring peace and order, ensuring accountability and promoting national reconciliation. And it has the full support of the UK government in these objectives. And we know that there are very strong people-to-people -people ties between Bangladesh and the UK. Chief Advisor Dr. Yunus will address the nation this evening on the completion of 100 days of the interim government. The speech will begin at 7 p.m. The interim government, led by Professor Yunus, was sworn in on 8 August last after the fall of Sheikh Hasina's regime on 5 August amid a mass upsurge led by the students. The interim government has created 86,000 jobs under various ministries within its first 100 days in office. Youth and Sport Advisor Asif Mahmood said a total of 86,000 new jobs have been created in both revenue and project sectors during the period. He mentioned the government has set a target to provide institutional and non-institutional training to 264 thousand job seeking youth for employment in both public and private sectors as well as for self-employment. BNP Chairperson's advisor Abdul Salam has said the interim government is failing to prioritize its actions distracted by the influence of fascist elements. Speaking at a discussion, he also questioned why the cases against BNP acting chairman Tariq Rahman had not been withdrawn while those against interim government chief Dr. Yunus were dismissed just in a day. The current government is misguided by Hasina's ghosts who still remain in various places including the administration. So they can't decide what to do first and what to do later, the BNP leader said. আপনারা পরিকল্পনা করেন যে আগামী কিছুদিনের মধ্যে কিছু সংস্কার করে কিভাবে নির্বাচনটা করতে পারেন কিভাবে নির্বাচিত প্রতিনিধিদের হাতে ক্ষমতাটা অর্পণ করতে পারেন কারণ আপনাদের দীর্ঘদিন ক্ষমতায় থাকার কোনো সুযোগ নাই রাজনৈতিক দলগুলোর সাথে প্রতিনিয়ত বসেন সপ্তাহে সপ্তাহে বসেন তাদের পরামর্শ নেন তাদের পরামর্শ নিয়ে সরকার পরিচালনা করেন তাহলে ভুল ত্রুটি কম হবে 
Seven leaders and activists of Islami Chhatra Shibir student wing of Jamaat Islami today filed complaints of enforced disappearance and torture at the International Crimes Tribunal against 53 people, including members of law enforcing agencies. The seven complaints were filed for the Shibir activists Johnny Islam, Abdul Karim, Saiful Islam, Delwar Hussain, Alamgir Hussain, Nurul Amin, and Kamru Zaman. The leaders said they have so far filed 17 complaints at the tribunal for 16 members of their organization and one commoner. <laughs> টাইট করে চুক বেঁধে রাখা হতো যদি তারা এসে চুকের কাপড় লুজ পেতো তাহলে খুব মারধর করতো বাধ্য হয়ে আমরা যে বোতলে পানি খেতাম ওই বোতলে প্রস্রাব করতাম প্রস্রাব করে ওইটা আবার পরিষ্কার করে ওই বোতলে পানি খেতাম আমরা ট্রাইব্যুনাল অভিযোগ দায়ের করেছি আমরা আমাদের অভিমত আমাদের প্রত্যাশা ব্যক্ত করেছি যে যারা এখনো মিসিং আছে আমরা তাদেরকে ফিরে পাব যারা এই ফ্যাসিস্ট আওয়ামী সরকারে নির্যাতনের শিকার হয়েছে যারা এই ভায়োলেন্সের সাথে জড়িত জড়িত ছিল তাদেরকে শাস্তির আওতায় নিয়ে এসে এই ট্রাইব্যুনাল ন্যায় বিচার প্রতিষ্ঠা করবে সে প্রত্যাশা আমরা ব্যক্ত করেছি Businesses have identified inflation, economic downturn and poverty and inequality as top risks Bangladesh will face in the next two years, according to a new survey by the Centre for Policy Dialogue. Nearly 17% of businesses identified corruption as their primary challenge in 2004, according to the survey revealed during a dialogue organised by CPT at the Brack Centre in Intaka today. The businesses in the survey mentioned volatility in the exchange rate as the second biggest challenge, followed by inefficient government bureaucracy, inflation and limited access to finance. Business costs of crime and violence, uh, then it is business costs for organized crime and reliability of the police service is also very, very poor. So this was the, the, uh, the sum of the indicators which we found uh, was very poor. The small amounts, people who'd stop your, uh, uh, stop processing your file for, I don't know, 500 bucks, but he'll stop you for seven days, right? So that is what really, really hurts businesses. Where does all of this come from? So effectively, what I'm trying to say is that there are layers of corruption issues. It is the lowest level, ground level service delivery point corruption, which hurts businesses the most. Central bank undertake all the responsibility of the inflation to reduce. I think they are living in the fool's paradise. Because there is 17 to 18 region why inflation takes place in this. We should restructure the ocean, central bank. Take this dictatorial system away. Sea levels, you can debate whether we're in touch with people or not, as we get to hear a lot of the time. But the one thing that is unimpeachable is uh, the honesty of intention and purpose with which every member of government has approached the role that they have found themselves in uh, right now. Bangladesh's banking sector experienced the historic highest rise in default loans by a 73,000 crore in just three months from July to September this year, following the end of the Sheikh Hasina regime's 15 years rule. The total default loan in the banking sector stood at Taka 284,000 crore at the end of September, which was 17% of the total outstanding, up from Taka 111,000 crore in June, according to data released by the Bangladesh Bank today. The historically high amount has been recorded because of failure in loan payments by some big business conglomerates that were affiliated with the Awamilik regime. Before ending, let's have a look on the Crownsman headlines once again. Reforms to ensure fair pose, Dr. Yunus, UK Minister for laying out vision for level playing field. Interim government failing to prioritise due to fascist influence alleges BNP leader Salam. Inflation, economic downturn, poverty, inequality top risks for next two years, says Sibidi. 
And that's all from the news and for now. To know our best videos of this bulletin, visit our website www.ntvbd.com. Besides, visit our YouTube and verified Facebook page for updates over NTV's all popular programs and bulletins. Our next bulletin, Shundar Khabur, will be at in Bangla at 7.30pm. Thank you for being with us. Have a good time.